Welcome to another video in explained in minutes. Today we are going to see data encryption and decryption. Not only that, you can also generate your own cryptographic key using your password. Watch the entire video to know the uses of cryptography Python package. With this, welcome to ASA Learning. This is going to be interesting today. We are going to see three main uses of cryptography package. To install this package, you are going to give pip install cryptography. I'll copy this one and I'll open comment prompt. Paste it here. Pip install cryptography is all I want to do to install this package. And we have successfully installed cryptography package. If you want to install it, the package link is given in the description below. And also the link of the notebook is given in the description below. After the installation of cryptography package, we are going to import Fernet from cryptography. So from cryptography.fernet. From this package, we are going to import Fernet. You can ask me, what is Fernet? Fernet is something that guarantees that a message encrypted using it cannot be manipulated or read without the key. So it needs a key in order to read your encrypted message. The first step of data encryption is to generate key. So we are going to generate key now. Fernet. We are going to use the imported package and generate key. So I'll create an object for Fernet and I will pass in the key that we generated here. We have to pass on the message that needs to be encrypted. I'll name the string as message itself. And one thing is to be noted here. The message that you want to encrypt should be in bytes and not in string. So I'll mention it as bytes. The message that we are going to encrypt is ASA learning. So B here indicates bytes. To encrypt the message, it is really easy. We have to create a Fernet token. I'll name it as Fernet token itself. Fernet token. So we are going to use the created object for Fernet and encrypt we have to pass in the message that we need to encrypt. This is the message that we are going to encrypt now. Now let us check whether the message has been encrypted. Yes, you got the encrypted message. This is also in bytes. So our message has been encrypted. To do decryption, it is just a single line. You're going to use the same object that we have mentioned. So the key should be the same. As we have created the key using Fernet, Again, we are going to use the same object here. I will name it as decrypted message. We are going to use the same object. This time, in instead of encrypt, we are going to use decrypt and we will pass in the encrypted string here. So the encrypted token is Fernet token. So when I run this cell, let us try to print the decrypted message. We exactly got our message after decryption, but this is in byte. So in order to convert into string, this will be useful in many cases. All you have to do is you need to decode it using Unicode standard, which is Unicode transformation format, 8 bits. So let us convert these bytes to string. Decrypted message. And there is an decode method available. I'll give the Unicode transformation format 8 bit. When we run this one, we will get our message in string format. Very simple, by just using two lines of code, by help of cryptography package, you have encrypted the message and also performed decryption. As simple as that, isn't it? We are going to see couple more users here. One is using multi-fernet and another is using passwords with fernet. So if you want to create a key using your password, even that we are going to perform now. Here, multi-fernet performs encryption using the first key in the list provided. So multi-fernet decrypts tokens with each key in turn. To simplify this, multi-fernet performs all encryption option using the first key in this list provided. So the first key is used for all encryption option and attempts to decrypt tokens with each key in turn. Now we will go through the same process that we saw before. We have a message to be encrypted here, which I gave in bytes. The message that needs to be encrypted is explained in minutes. To encrypt the message, we are going to use multi-fernet now. So the other concepts is the same. You're going to create a Fernet token. So now let us execute it one by one to see 
how multifinet works but before that we need to import multifinet this belongs to the same package i have imported multifinet now we will run this cell one by one so the message to be encrypted is explained in minutes so when i see the encrypted message hence using multifinet we have encrypted our message to decrypt it it is the same process and to convert to string from byte to string i am using unicode transformation format so when i print this one we got our decrypted message so this is the major difference between multifinet and using fernet in encryption and decryption now we will see something interesting using passwords with fernet where we will create key using our passwords itself so this will be very useful in many places using passwords with fernet to perform this i have imported five packages i will come one by one first one is import os if you are not sure what is os module in python i have already made a video in explained in minutes you will see the pop up above the next one that we are importing is base64 this is to decode the base64 encoded bytes like object we will see the usage below from cryptography we have used hazardous material packages and we have imported hashes and we have imported key derivation functions so what is this key derivation function we will come to know in a matter of 2 minutes and from key derivation function we have imported password based key derivation function to hash based message authentication the use of this package you will be seeing it now we have imported default backend as well this is one of the parameter to create the key derivation function i will import all the five packages that we need here we are going to create key using our password so our password here is 123456 which is the most obvious password using this password we are going to create a key using fernet there is something called a salt salt is a random data to create the random data here we use os modules we are creating a 16 bit data let me print and show you so each time you run this string it gives you a random 16 byte data this random data is called as salt so why are we doing this one you will come to know when you are creating key derivation function that is where this part comes along so in order to create a key derivation function you have to call this particular package that we have imported which is password based key derivation function 2 for this it takes around five parameters i have given most of it as default and the salt value that we have just created it now let us run this one let us derive the key for password based key derivation function now the goal is to create the key using our password so key equals the above key derivation function that we have just created now so using it we are going to derive what are we going to derive from our password so i'll pass this password string here when i run this one we have created a key using our password as simple as that right so you can also verify whether this particular password is the same key that we have created even that is available for that you are going to call key derivation function that we have created above and another method which is verify i will pass in the password and the key so let us run it again we got an error why did we get this error because you can create this instance of key derivation function only once so i have to run this again i'll run this again and i'll verify it so now it is successfully verified because it takes two arguments which is the key material which is our password and based on this password it has actually generated a key and we have verified it now let us actually create a key based on our password so here we are using base64 just to encode our key derivation function so the key will be based on our password again we got the error because key derivation function instance should only be used once so i'll run this key derivation function again and i'll create a key and fernet object so we have created a fernet object using our key based on our password how cool is it so now we will come back to the same process that we just saw we will encrypt our message this time the message is very strict one subscribe to ac learning so we are going to encrypt this message now so encryption is done but the encryption is actually based on our password this is how you use passwords with fernet decryption is also simple as we have to convert from bytes to string unicode transformation function into 8 bits and you can have multiple use cases using encryption and decryption just by a single package by using cryptograph i thank each and every one of you for supporting explained in minute series if you are interested in magic card reveals programming as well as math 
we have pro magic series the complete playlist is given in the description below if you find this video useful give a like comment your queries below i'll try to reply to all your queries and don't forget to subscribe to asa learning thank you all for watching see you in the next video of explained in minutes take a pound